When that time comes, the whole world will have shrunk to a point. And the traditional role of the city as a meeting place for a man would have ceased to make any sense. In fact, men will no longer commute. They will communicate. They won't have to travel for business anymore. They'll only Bitcoin travel kicked off pleasure. a decade-long experiment in creating this bottom-up, permissionless, decentralized digital economy native to the internet that is slowly eating the world. And then Ethereum came along and all the projects that built on top of it, leveraging its composability to bring about greater levels of complexity to this digital market. So allowing for things like borrowing and lending of digital assets and digital wealth. I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg. I think the potential of what the internet is going to do to society, both good and bad, is unimaginable. It's really reframed what we mean when we say Web3 away from uh, Sir Tim Bernalee's um, concept of the semantic web towards something that's effectively an antidote for what the web has become, this kind of broken web dominated by a handful of corporations, platform monopolies, and a series of data silos which prize shareholder supremacy over the user, over user centricity. Specifically, the data scientists write about their methods in a way that brags about the fact that these systems bypass our awareness so that they bypass our rights to say yes or no. Now, there's a possibility of a one-to-one -one relationship for the many. Everyone can have a teacher in the form of access to the gathered knowledge of the human species. Web3 promises to both restore and hopefully enhance user centricity, centricity of uh, the individual and their data back to the web. They send you the package as a direct personal service. This is where we're heading under electronic information conditions products increasing are uh, becoming services. And as a consequence, we end up being reliant upon um, trust brokers or intermediaries. Uh, and here you have value capture. And the cost of that capture is almost like a digital tax. We're using the internet, and that's both a transactional tax that's prohibitively high because of the monopolization of these platforms, but there's also a societal cost around the cost of privacy that we use uh, or lose when we hand over, um, hand over the web to these platforms. I suddenly realized that this is not going to reach the general public unless it's turned into an economic engine that's self-supporting. The way that people find match buyers and sellers will be radically different. Uh, that's the, the fundamental mechanism of capitalism and the internet is bringing a new level of efficiency to it. Web3 promises to um, remove these points of friction through open source technologies, uh, algorithms, and allow for a democratization of the data economy and uh, its main benefactor, AI. And if you learn to turn your back on the failures of the past and concentrate on the confidence of yesterday and use that confidence today, now, N-O-W, in your present undertaking, you will learn how to succeed in life. Web3 can also be thought of as a brain trust, an incredibly powerful brain trust of computer scientists, of entrepreneurs, of economists that are creating to this open stack of internet infrastructure. Um, each innovation compounding and enhancing the other one. Uh, it will happen within 20 years. It probably will happen within 10 years. But it could happen within five years. For us, an outlier is a really important mission. And I think that extends to a lot of the founders that you speak to in this space. Because really what we're trying to build is a hedge against um, the abuse of monopolies and the potential oppression of governments and of course that's something that's increasingly getting closer to home at least here in the west but commercially this also represents the investment opportunity of a lifetime for both 
investors and entrepreneurs because this technology cycle is going to be orders of magnitude much greater than anything we've seen before.